Welcome to everyone's favorite topic, APA formatting. The intention of this presentation is not to cover every rule in the APA manual, but rather to give you a beginning familiarity of APA formatting. Throughout this presentation, I will reference where you can find this information in the APA manual. Therefore, I would highly recommend that you pull your APA manual out and follow along. In addition, I will also reference the basic APA tip sheet that can be found in the library guide. If you have not downloaded this tip sheet, I would recommend doing so prior to moving forward in this presentation. If you look at the table of contents of your APA manual, you will see that the various topics are organized by chapter. For example, information on scholarly writing and publishing principles can be found in chapter one. Once you turn to a specific chapter, you will find a more detailed table of contents. Each of the chapter topics are given section numbers. Here I have provided the detailed table of contents for chapter one, scholarly writing and publishing principles. Within this chapter, information about quantitative articles can be found in chapter one, section one, which begins on page four. Inside the chapter, you will see that it provides the chapter and section number for each topic. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to use the chapter and section number to reference the location of the information as opposed to the page numbers. Sometimes the page numbers may change over time. Therefore, to avoid any confusion, I will use chapter and section numbers. What is APA formatting? Most people, when they hear APA, they only think of citations. That is, when you have to cite a source in your paper. But APA is more than just citations. It also includes how your paper should be formatted, how it should look. It includes rules for grammar and punctuation to include bias-free language and how your tables should be formatted. We'll begin with formatting your paper. Chapter two, sections 18 through 24, delineates how your paper should be formatted. According to chapter two, section 18, your paper should have page numbers on every page, which are flushed right and entered into the header as opposed to manually typing in each page number. The title page should begin with page one. Chapter two, section 19 states that you should use a font that is accessible to the reader, and they give you several options that you can use. These fonts are chosen because they are readily accepted by various assisted technologies. Your entire paper should be double spaced from the title page through the references section. Chapter two, section 21 does note a couple of exceptions, such as in tables and footnotes. You should not add additional spaces between the paragraphs. It should have one inch margins all around, top and bottom, left and right. Additionally, you should not justify your lines. What do we mean by not justifying your lines? If you look at your APA manual, this is actually what you should not do. When the lines are justified, the word processing program adds in spaces to make each sentence the same length in order to have all the lines flush with both the left and right margins. This is incorrect and not what you want to do. What you want to have is what is called flush left style. And this is actually the default setting on word processing programs unless you have changed the settings. In the flush left style, the left side is flush with the left margin with the exception of when you would indent a new paragraph. But the right side is ragged. It does not line up with the margin. And this is what you want. This is the correct way. You also need to indent the first line of every paragraph by a half an inch. This is the default setting for word processing programs. When you hit tab, it is set to indent by one half inch. In summary, your paper should have page numbers on every page, beginning with the title page, and they are located in the header flush right. Use a font that is accessible to the reader. Your entire paper is double spaced with one inch margins. You should not justify your lines with the exception of block quotations and you must indent the first line of every paragraph by a half an inch. Formatting your paper also includes the title page. Figure 2.2 provides a visual of what this should look like. In the top right hand corner is the page number, which would be one. According to chapter two, section four, the title should be in upper and lower case letters, centered, and in the upper half of the page. This should be in the same font as the rest of your paper, nothing fancy. Following your title, you will have your name and then the institution, both centered, followed by the course number and name, instructor's name, and the due date. These should all be centered, double spaced, and on separate lines. Here's an example of what a title page should look like. In the upper right hand corner is the page number. The title is in upper and lower case letters and is centered. 
according to Chapter 2, Section 5, you will leave one blank double spaced line between the title and your name. Then, on each of the following lines, you will have your institution, the course number and name, the instructor's name, and the due date. Each are in upper and lowercase letters and are centered. Make sure you always check with your professor, as some may also want you to include additional information or less information. There is also an example of a title page on page one of the basic APA tip sheet. Page two of your paper should be the abstract. The abstract is a brief summary of your paper. It highlights all of the topics that you cover in your paper. Always check with your professor if you need to include one, because the last thing you want to do is to spend the time writing one, only to find out that it was not required. Your paper should also include levels of heading. More information can be found in Chapter 2, Section 27. Table 2.3 and Figure 2.5 are handy tools to remember the formatting rules for each level. What are levels of heading? They are an easy way to structure your paper and let the reader know when you have moved to a different topic. They also improve the readability of your paper. I give the example to think about if one of your textbooks did not have any chapters. It would be very difficult to read because it would be loads and loads of information with no breaks. Levels of heading break up your information. They also make it easier to write your paper because instead of having to figure out a way to eloquently transition from one topic to the next, you can simply end one topic, put in a heading, and begin the next topic. I recommend looking at your syllabus and the topics that you are required to cover in your paper as a starting point for your headings. Here is an example of what a paper with levels of heading would look like. To begin, Chapter 2, Section 11 states that you should begin by restating the title of your paper. This will be centered and in bold and will be in upper and lowercase letters. You will not include a heading that says introduction as it is understood that your first paragraph is the introduction of your paper. The first heading I have is the populations affected. As a level one heading, it is in bold, centered, and in upper and lowercase letters. Then I move to a new topic, consequences of school dropout. This is different than populations affected. And because I'm now discussing a separate topic, there is a different heading. It is still a level one heading, so you will see that it is also in bold, centered, and in upper and lowercase letters. I next have a subheading under my level one heading of consequences of school dropout. Here I go into greater detail of the individual consequences of school dropout. The level two heading is flush left, in bold, and in upper and lowercase letters. I then have another subheading, which is the consequences of school dropout for the family. This is a subheading of my level one heading, consequences, but I want to go into greater detail into the consequences for the individual and the family, and so I will use a level two heading to alert the reader to each of these topics. As I noted, table 2.3 provides the rules for each of the five levels of heading. I highly doubt that you will need to use five different levels of heading in your papers here in the social work program, but they are there if you need them. At the very least, you will use level one headings and maybe level two. Moving on from formatting your paper, APA format also includes grammar and punctuation. Chapters four, five, and six are dedicated to grammar and punctuation. Chapter five in particular provides guidelines for bias-free writing. I am not going to cover them in this presentation, but if you want to know when you should use that versus which, or when you should use a semicolon versus a colon, I recommend you check out chapters four through six. APA also provides guidance on how to format your tables, which can be found in Chapter 7. The manual also includes several sample tables beginning with 7.1, so you can see what an APA formatted table should look like. And finally, what most people are most familiar with, citations. In APA, all references that are cited in the body of your paper must be cited in the references list. This means that if you have 10 sources cited in the body of your paper, you must have 10 sources cited in your references list. All references that are cited in the references list must be cited in the body of your paper. If you have 10 sources cited in your references list, then all 10 sources must be cited in the body of your paper. The two must match. This is different than a bibliography. 
In a bibliography, you include not only the sources used in your paper, but also any sources that you consulted but did not cite. For example, if you read a chapter in a book but did not cite it, you would include it in a bibliography, but you do not include it in APA, only what you cite. I am going to begin with the references page. I have found that if you create a citation correctly in the references page, it is that much easier to create the in-text citation. The purpose of the references page is to provide all of the possible information for each of the sources such that someone could follow the writer's trail and find those sources. This is actually a great way for you to search for information. Once you find a great article or book, you can look at the references page and look up those sources that you want to read. Chapter 9 of the APA manual provides a general overview of the components of a references list and includes a great table, Table 9.1 which outlines how to cite a source if it is missing various components. Chapter 10 provides examples of different types of sources. We will begin with journal articles, and you can find several examples in Chapter 10, Section 1 of your APA manual. Here you can see the basic format for citing a journal article. This information is also included in the basic APA tip sheet beginning on page 2. But what is a journal? I have found that students are in general familiar with journal articles as most of you have downloaded a PDF of a journal article from the library, but they are often unsure of what a journal actually is. Here you can see a picture of two different journals, the Journal of Community Practice and the Journal of Social Work. Journals are a publication that is comprised of a number of different articles, each written by different authors. And journals are published multiple times a year, each time with different articles. Journals are kind of like magazines. Think of National Geographic or Time magazine. Both National Geographic and Time are published several times a year. And like a journal, inside the magazine, there are multiple articles that are written by different authors. If we go back to the format of a journal article, you can see that in the dark blue italics, it says the journal of something. This is where you put the name of the journal. The first picture is the journal of community practice. In the citation, you would put the journal of community practice in dark blue. Remember, this is the name of the publication, like National Geographic or Time. In the second picture, you would note the name of the journal is the journal of social work education. Journals are generally published multiple times each year, just like magazines are. In the pictures here, you can see that this journal was published in 2015, but one is from the summer and one is from the fall. Most journals utilize the same volume number for the entire year. In this journal, volume 51 was published in 2015. This would mean that volume 50 was published in 2014 and volume 52 was published in 2016. This is not a hard and fast rule. Some journals will use two different volume numbers for one publication year. The issue or number lets you know in what order it was published. This journal begins with issue number one, which is published in January. Issue number two is published in the spring. You can see here that issue number three is published in the summer and four in the fall. Some journals may publish every month, so 12 issues a year, some more and some less. And just like a magazine, in each issue, there are different articles that are included. In the first few pages of each journal issue, there is a table of contents. Similar to a magazine, it lists the articles that are included, the author or authors of each article, and the page numbers. As you can see, there are multiple articles that are included in each issue of a journal. For most journals, they begin issue number one with page one, and then they continue the page numbers from one issue to the next. You can see here that the first article on issue number three begins with page 421, and the first article on issue number four begins with page 619. Some journals begin each issue with number one, but most follow the format that you see here. As I noted, each issue of each journal contains multiple articles. In this issue, if I wanted to read the third article, I would turn to page 439, and this is what I would find. When you download an article from the library, you have a PDF of the same article, but it is only this article. What I hope you can see now is that this one article is actually one of several in this issue, which is one of many that is published by this journal. Back to the components of a journal article citation, first you list the author or author's names. The format is last name, comma, space, first initial, 
period, space, middle initial, period. You will have to put the author's names into this format. If we go back to the example article, you can see that the author's names are listed first name first, then last. You have to transform their names into this format. For example, my name is Karen L. Putsu. You would list me as Putsu, comma, space, C, period, space, L, period. You use a comma to separate each author. And between the last author and to the second last author, you use the and sign. Next, you have the publication year. In the examples we saw, it was 2015. The title of the article, followed by the name of the journal in italics, the volume and issue number, only the volume number is in italics and there is no space between the volume and the issue number, the page numbers, and the DOI number. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. You can think of this as a social security number for each article. Each article has its own unique number. You can actually use the DOI as a fast and easy way to find an article. If you type the DOI number in the search bar on the library's website, it should bring you directly to that particular article. Here is an example of a journal article citation. This particular article has three authors, Adams, Figley, and Boscarino. You can see that there is a space between the first initial and middle initial and a comma between each of the authors. There is also the ampersand, the and sign, between Figley and Boscarino, the last and second to the last authors. It was published in 2008. The title of the article is The Compassion Fatigue Scale is Used with Social Workers Following Urban Disaster. The name of the journal is Research on Social Work Practice. This would be like the Journal of Social Work Education that we saw earlier. The volume number is 18 and the issue number is 3 and it can be found on pages 238 through 250 and it has the DOI number. Some things to remember when creating the citations. Do not reorder the authors. You must use the order as they are presented in the article. They are listed that way for a reason and if you change the order then it will be difficult to find this article again. This article is cataloged as Adams, Figley, and Boscarino. If you change it to Boscarino, Adams, and Figley, it would make it very difficult to find. Do not leave off any authors. You don't get to be lazy and just list the first one. You have to list all of them. The title of the article is not capitalized except for the first word, the first word after a colon, and any proper nouns. In this example, the first word, the, is capitalized. Compassion fatigue scale is capitalized because it is a proper noun. It's is capitalized because it is the first word after the colon, but none of the other words are capitalized. The title of the journal is capitalized except for conjunctions. You can see that research, social work, and practice are all capitalized. On is not because it is a conjunction. Where do you find the parts of the citation in a journal article? The authors are listed at the top of the page. You do not list their institutional affiliations. If they had listed their credentials, like PhD or MSW, you do not include them. The year is at the very bottom. The title is at the top. The journal name is at the bottom, along with the volume and issue number, page number, and the DOI number. Unfortunately, there is no consistent rules of formatting for the journals themselves. Different journals will vary where they put the information. Some will put the information at the top of the first page, some will spread it out between two pages, some will not list the page numbers, in that instance you can simply look at the first and last page. If you can't find the information, you can always go back to the library website and look up the article and you can generally find the information on the search engine before you downloaded the article. Moving on to books, your APA manual provides the outline for various types of books, such as edited books or translated books, but the basic format for a book citation can be seen here. Similar to the journal article, you list the author or authors, the year of publication, and the title of the book. Same as the title of a journal article, only the first word, first word after a colon, and any proper nouns are capitalized, but the title of the book is italicized. You also include the name of the publisher. This information can also be found on page two of the basic APA tip sheet. Here is an example. There is one author, Rory, comma, space, J, 
period, space, L, period. It was published in 2013. The title is in italics. The first word education is capitalized. The first word after the colon contours is capitalized and American is capitalized because it is a proper noun. It is the fourth edition of this book. If it provides the edition, it is placed at the end of the title in parentheses, but it is not in italics. And it was published by Routledge. Where to find the information for a citation in a book? If you look in the first two to four pages of a book, you will see these two pages. The author is pretty easy to find, as well as the title of the book. You can see it states it is the fourth edition. The author and title are also on the cover of the book, not pictured here. The year of publication is in the upper right hand side of the page. If there are multiple years listed, you list the most recent year. The name of the publisher can be found at the bottom of the first page or at the top of the second page. Moving on to web pages. Chapter 10, section 15 provides examples for citing social media and section 16 provides examples for citing web pages. The general format for a web page is to list the author or authors, which may also be the name of an agency or an organization. Since the material on web pages can change, you should include the month and day if they provide it along with the year. The title can be what is listed at the top of the web page you are on, or you can also use a section heading such as about or history as your title. You follow the same rules for the title like you would for a book title. Next, you include the name of the organization or entity whose website you are using. Although if the author is also the name of the organization, you do not include it. You then copy and paste the full URL of where you found the information. The idea is that someone should be able to copy and paste the URL and land at the exact same spot on the website. This information can also be found on the basic APA tip sheet beginning on the bottom of page two. If you can download a PDF, you do not use this format. You would use the reports and gray literature format, which can be found in chapter 10, section four. Here's an example of a citation for a webpage. The author is H. Branswell, which is written as Branswell, comma, H, period. The information was published on December 19th, 2019. You have the title of the webpage, the name of the organization, the website is stat, and you have the URL. In order to find this information, take a look at the screenshot of this webpage. This webpage says by, and then the name of the author, Helen Branswell. The publication date is listed at the top. Sometimes it's at the bottom. The title is at the top. If it is not clearly stated like this example, simply use the best information you can to identify what you are reading. The name of the website, the organization is stat, and the URL. In this example, the author is the name of the agency, the Annie E. Casey Foundation. One thing to know, agencies do not have first and last names. You would not list this as foundation, comma, the Annie E. Casey. You will also know that the webpage states it is a blog. According to Chapter 9, Section 21, you should add a description in brackets to help identify work such as blogs, maps, or infographics. Therefore, in your citation, you will have blog in brackets. This is the citation for the previous web page. Because the author is the name of the organization, that is, the owner of the website, you do not include it like we did for the other example. According to Chapter 9, Section 7, if there's not an author's name, you can generally infer the organization or governmental agency is the author. On this web page, you could safely infer that the U.S. Department of Education is the author. Therefore, the U.S. Department of Education is listed as the author. Again, you do not give the organization's first and last names. This would not be education, comma, U.S. Department of. Since the name of the organization is the author, you do not include it again after the title. In all three examples, a publication date or last modified date has been included, seen here at the bottom of this web page. If there is no date provided, you can simply use N period D period. Do not use the copyright date that is typically found at the very bottom of a web page. The copyright date does not indicate when the information was last written or last updated. Now that we know how to create the citations for a references page, we will move on to the in-text citations. 
All of Chapter 8 provides numerous examples of in-text citations, and the Table 8.1 is an extremely helpful table. I would strongly recommend you tab this table for future reference. I have also provided examples on the tip sheet beginning on page 5. We will first address citing paraphrased material. Paraphrasing means that you have put the material into your own words. This does not mean switching out a few words with a synonym, but actually putting the idea into your own words. For paraphrased material, you use the author year format. Here is an example. The study found that social workers experienced secondary trauma following the recovery efforts. The authors did not say these words. I am summarizing their findings. At the end of the citation, you have the authors and the year. If we look back at the citation, you will see that the first author is Adams, and there are two other authors. In the seventh edition of the APA, if there are three or more authors, you list the first author, add a space, and then add the words at all in the in-text citation. There is a period after all immediately followed by a comma. Then you have the year of publication, which must be the same year of publication that is in the references list. Whereas in the references citation, you would list the author's first and middle initial, you will note that the initials are not included in the in-text citation. The point of the in-text citation is to give a shorthand of the full citation. The full citation with all of the pertinent information can be found in the references page, and the full citation provides all of the information to find this article again. Therefore, since we have all of the information in the references page, the in-text citation does not need every piece of information. For direct quotations, you use the author, year, and page number or locator format. In this example, it says that the study suggested that therapists can exhibit symptoms consistent with PTSD. The direct quotation, that is the words from the article, are surrounded by quotation marks. At the end of the quotation marks, you have a space, and then the citation is followed by a period. The period goes after the citation, not at the end of the quote. The in-text citation has the author, year, and page number of where you can find the quote. It is not the page numbers of the entire article. If we look back at the citation, you can see that the first author is the same. And since we have three or more authors, we use at all, it is the same publication year, and the page number falls within the page numbers of the article. A few thoughts on direct quotations. The general rule of thumb is that your direct quotations should be used sparingly, and to only use them if the author say it better than you can. Another rule is that you should not be able to tell where your writing ends and the quote begins. The quote should flow seamlessly in your writing. If you read this sentence, the study suggested that therapists can exhibit symptoms consistent with PTSD, but did not see where the quotation marks are, you would not know where the quote started and stopped. There are a few tricks you can use in order to make a quote flow in your writing. For one, sometimes there is more to the quote than what you want to use. In this example, you can see that there are three dots in the middle of the quote. Those three dots are called an ellipsis. The use of an ellipsis is telling us that there is more to this quote, there is more to the sentence than what is used right here. You will also see the words on universal basic income is in brackets. The words on universal basic income are not originally in the quote. I added it in order to increase the understanding of the sentence. It is okay if you add a couple of words or even change the tense if you need to. You simply put your additions in brackets to let everyone know that you have altered the original quote. This way, you are maintaining the integrity of the original writing. You can see here that the original sentence had quite a bit more to it than what I used in the quote. This is perfectly acceptable as you only want to use the information that you need for your paper. Although I used the ellipses in the middle of the quote to signify that I've deleted information from the middle of the quote, you do not use an ellipses at the beginning or the end of a quote, even if the source material had more to it. You may also notice in this example there are two authors listed. If the citation has two authors, you always must provide both authors with the ampersand, the and sign, between the two names. It is only if you have three or more authors that you use at all. I also want to point out a common error I see students make, which is the failure to cite paraphrase material. Most students are very conscientious at citing direct quotations but then they forget to add the second citation here. 
The first citation in this example only takes care of the direct quotation. It is citing what just came before it. Without the second citation, there would be no way of knowing where the information from that last sentence came from. You cannot assume the information came from the same source, because sometimes the information is not from the same source. If the second citation, the one at the end, was missing, this would be considered plagiarism because the last sentence is not my idea. I am paraphrasing this information from Hamilton and Martin West, and without citing them and giving them credit, I have plagiarized their material. If you are quoting a source that does not have page numbers, like a web page, use paragraph number. In this example, you see the author, as noted in the example, is the Annie E. Casey Foundation, the year of publication, and the paragraph is noted by para, period, and the number. You can also use the section title if using a paragraph number is not feasible. Chapter 8, section 28 provides examples for using section titles. I also provide an example on page 6 of the basic APA tip sheet. Here is a screenshot of the web page, and the quote came from the first paragraph. Yes, you could print this web page and it will give you page numbers, but there is no uniformity in how one computer and one printer may print the information. Unlike when you download a PDF, it doesn't matter which computer you are on. Page 2 is always page 2. But when you are simply printing from the print screen, there is no uniformity. That is why we have to use paragraph number. Finally, if a quote is 40 or more words, you have to use the block quotation format. See Chapter 8, Section 27 in the APA Manual. I hope this presentation was helpful. I would encourage you, if you have not already, to also look at the tip sheet that is posted as I cover some additional information in that tip sheet. Happy APA formatting!